In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit functions and other APL objects in Dialog. And I'm also going to show how to trace through multi-line functions and debug your code. We can assign the results of expressions to names using the assignment arrow. Nums gets 12 random numbers between 1 and 10. And we can do quite a lot in a single line of APL. But eventually, you're going to want to write functions that consist of multiple expressions. To do this, we're going to use the editor. Use the system function quad ed, and this will bring up an editor window editing a new function whose name is that which we provided. You can also double click on a name, or with the text cursor on a name, press shift enter. I'm going to write the header for a traditional function. When I press the X which is attached to the editor, I will be met with this prompt asking if I want to save my changes. I can also press Shift Escape to exit the editor without saving my changes, or just press Escape to save my changes. When Dialog saves my changes in the active workspace, it also reformats my code. If I want to see this reformatting with the editor still open, in the Windows IDE I can press Edit, Reformat, or in both the Windows IDE and Ride I can use a keyboard shortcut which by default is the forward slash on the numpad. User defined functions can be used in any APL expression or inside other functions and operators the same way that you would use APL primitive functions. I'm going to call my say function with an argument which is a simple text vector, and I can see that it's not quite got the behaviour that I intended. So now I'm going to use the debugger to trace through my code and see what's wrong. With the text cursor on the line of the expression, I can do this either using the action menu item and trace, or I can press Control Enter. From here there are some controls that I can click, such as to execute an expression, or to go back a line, or to skip over the current line. And there are also some keyboard shortcuts, like Control Shift Backspace to go back, or Enter to execute an expression. Now I can see what the problem is. I've supplied a literal text vector to the quad gets print statement instead of my argument. To edit the function while debugging, I can double click in a blank area, or with the text cursor on a blank area, I can press Shift Enter. I can press Shift Escape to exit the edit mode without saving my changes, or just press Escape to keep my changes. I can now see that I've fixed the issue. To continue executing the entire function, not just line by line, I can use one of the continue execution buttons. If you're just getting started, it doesn't matter which one you click because the difference is related to multi-threaded applications. You can also configure keyboard shortcuts to save changes to your functions while keeping the editor open. In the Windows IDE, this is under Options, Configure, and Keyboard Shortcuts. Look for the code FX. Click in the box and type a shortcut which works for you. I'm using Control Shift S. And in the ride, this can be found under Edit, Preferences, Shortcuts, and search for FX. If I've created a link between a namespace in the active workspace and a folder on the file system, then changes made using the dialog editor are automatically reflected on the file system. Similarly, changes made to my code using an external editor are automatically brought into the active workspace. Currently, in order to have changes made using an external editor, 
automatically update the active workspace, I need to have .NET enabled, which you can check using the bracket version user command. The editor and debugger in the Windows IDE and on Ride are very similar, except for example they have slightly different symbols. There is a link in the description to the relevant chapter in the book Mastering Dialog APL, which explains the interface in a bit more detail. So that was about APL code, but the editor is also able to display the contents of APL arrays, and it can also be used to edit certain types of character data. For example, here is some text with multiple lines. But if we inspect this variable, we can see that it is a two element vector that's nested and the length of each vector within it is different. To see how to create other types of APL objects, you can use the help user command on quad ED and this will bring up the online documentation which shows you which left arguments to provide in order to edit different types of APL objects. And you can also press F1 with the text cursor on Quad ED. In Windows, this brings up the inbuilt documentation, which is the same content as the online documentation. So that was a quick overview of using the inbuilt editing tools in Dialog and making changes to your code mid-execution.